Hello. Welcome to the session on DevConf proposals for DevConf 15. Um, it's not too late still to decide that you're interested in having DevConf 15 in your city. I mean, today or even in the next few months. If you want to register your interest today, it's nice. I know a couple of groups are here who have presentations ready to share. But it's also possible if you just want to come up and say, I think it would be great if we want to have it in Syria or whatever, um, and try and find later some team for that. So I just, I will, I th well, to start with, I think, so who is actually here from a bid team? I know that there are people from Belgium and people from Germany here. Is there any other team here that wants to, that's willing to say anything today, or is that it? Vumaku <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think what we, the best format is if I just say a few things quickly about how this things work, then maybe we have about 10 minutes for each bid team that out of the two who registered their interest to show some presentation. And I think if we take questions to both bid teams together at the end, it will be more efficient than trying to split up the question time. So this is hopefully a map of uh, where we've had DevConf so far. Um, we are achieving kind of good coverage in some parts of the world. It would be maybe nice if one day we had some um, DevConfs in this kind of age area. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah, that, that one too, yeah. The travel sponsorship might be difficult, but yeah. A few years ago, we had a discussion about what DevConf is actually for. Um, and we ended up deciding some primary and some secondary goals of DevConf, which are listed on this slide. So we said that the, the main goals of DevConf are enabling face-to-face -face interactions between the people who come. Oh, trying to fall off the stage. Um, providing talks and video to many more people who are not actually physically present at DevConf. And providing time for people to work on Debian. And Two, big, two things that are big factors, but are, are kind of secondary to those and should really happen as a result of the other ones, are trying to motivate the contributors to the project and also to motivate the local community in whatever region the conference is held in. Um, typically, if, you, if we organize a good conference that really focuses on the first three, then the other ones will end up happening by themselves. Um, if you want to, for, for the bid teams, probably have already found the, the People who are pr making proposals today have probably already found this. But if you are interested in bidding for DevConf 15 or for any other future DevConf year, then you could have a look at this um, web uh, wiki page. And there's a lot of links from there to some other pages. Um, also on the DevConf wiki, there is a category DevConf manual, which has some documentation in better and worse states on various aspects of DevConf that can also be quite useful to look at if you're thinking about how things might work in your own region. Um, so the timeline then is a couple of teams will present possible proposals today. At the end of the year sometime, we'll have probably in December, we would have formal bids submitted, which means completing some kind of um, questionnaire effectively that we give and maybe ideally having some photos and other information ready, being able to answer people's questions about things. Um, and then probably early next year, we would then have a decision on what, what the venue would be for 2015. Um, the exact time frame is, will be a bit, is normally a bit dependent on what the, what the teams who are bidding want and how ready they feel they are. And then in 2015, we'll have DevConf in one of the locations. Um, and just to mention, if you, ha if you are organizing a bid or starting a tentative bid, then w given we're in Debian, it's not hard for us to provide you with a mailing list and web hosting or any other services you need. Just really go on, speak to someone who's, inv who's already involved in DevConf and they'll point you in the right direction. So we will now have the bid presentations. Can someone from the... Belgian bid, pick heads or tails. And the coin came heads, so you choose whether it's first or second. First.
Das ist dein We don't need. There we go. Um, is it on? Did I switch it off? It's on. It's working? Yeah, good. So, hi. Um, I uh, have been thinking about doing a DevCoff in Belgium for quite a while, and I decided uh, during the day trip today or this year that if I wasn't going to make a bit eventually, it would probably never happen. So, that's why we have a bit now. Um, I chose Mechelen mainly because that's where I live, and that would make it easiest for me, and because it was my idea, it's going to be Mechelen. <laughs> but this is not, not by any means uh, uh, final yet. If you find out that for, for some uh, practical reasons, uh, Mechelen is not the ideal solution in Belgium, then this may still change. But for now, we'll, we'll, we'll assume Mechelen. Um, Mechelen is an European city with a medieval history, which means that there's lots of things to do. I took a picture of a panorama picture of the Central Market Square, uh, you can see some medieval architecture there. Um, it is in the heart of Flanders in Belgium, halfway to in between Brussels and Antwerp. Uh, it has just over 80,000 inhabitants, which means that it's not a very large city. In fact, you can actually walk from one side of the city to the other within about 15 minutes. So that's not a very large city. Um, and another advantage of uh, being going to Belgium is that the uh, average person there will know at least two or three languages, Dutch, out of, uh, Dutch French, and English. We you will fi often find people who even speak uh, German or, or Spanish or something similar, and even more than that is absolutely not unheard of. We are really good with languages, which is useful for an international uh, conference. Uh, center of Europe, Schengen area, so getting there should not be providing too, much, too many issues for most people. Um, Mechelen is an interesting city with some things why it's famous. One of the few things, it, we, had, we have a soccer team that was UEFA uh, Champions Winner Cup champion in 1988, a long time ago, but <laughs> hey. Uh, a brewery called Het Anker, which brews some beers that are sold all over Belgium. Uh, they used to have a lot more. This is the only one that's left. You can visit it. It's a nice thing to do. Uh, there's a toy museum, which is interesting for kids and geeks alike. There is a Carolan school, um, a world-famous Carolan school, actu school, actually. People from all over the world come there to study Car playing the Carolan. And there are four public Carolans in total, which I kind of like. Uh, the Archbishop of Belgium lives in Mechelen. <laughs> Hence, the cathedral and a tower that you can visit with a nice view. Um, there is a zoo, also nice for kids. Uh, there is a Beganov. Um, Look it up on Wikipedia. It would take me far too long. I don't have that time. Uh, but it's really nice. Uh, all small, quaint, quaint houses. Really nice to visit. Um, there is a Hanswijk Prozessie. <laughs> Very famous, actually, called uh, World Heritage. So it's not just something. Um, and, well, most importantly, it will host DEPCON 15. <laughs> As I said, I made the decision to go for the DEPCON. So this is about the local team. If, if you want to do a DEPCON, you need a local team. We don't really have one yet, because in three days, building a local team is quite fast, so I didn't manage to do it. However, um, I'm personally a member of the FOSM team, so I do have some experience with building uh, large conferences. You may have heard of FOSM, I don't know. <laughs> um, there are 17 Belgian Debian developers. Not all of them are active anymore. At least those who are here um, are in the room and have in, uh, expressed their interest in helping out uh, to me. So, it should be an issue. There Sorry? Um, they are sitting right in front of you. <laughs> hi, Luc. Hi, Kurt. Um, hi, Ivo. Right there. Um, there are some Debian developers in the southern Netherlands as well. Um, I mean, 
Belgium is not that large, Mechelen is not that far from the border. In fact, um, some Debian developers from the Netherlands live closer to Mechelen than some Debian developers from Belgium. Um, and well, northern France, but that might be a bit of a stretch. At least some of those who are here have expressed interest as well. In addition, I've, I wrote a, a blog post about my intentions and I sent some email and that's produced some interest as well. So I think we're on the right track there to produce a local team. Um, if you're going to do a DevConf, you need a venue. Um, I, have, I, I think there are several options. I picked out two. Um, this one is really my pie in the sky option. I don't think we'll be able to use this one, but it would be really great if we could. Um, this is an, an old brewery, as the name here says, uh, Brouwer El Amot. Um, it is a closed one. It's not one of the active ones anymore. Um, they changed it into a convention center. You can see that this uh, ceiling is a bit sloped. That's because on top of that, there is an auditorium which can seat 250 people, according to their website. Um, they have seven more rooms that we could use to do talks in. Uh, not all of them are that large, of course. Um, they are also uh, situated right next to the river. Uh, and across the river is the, the fish market, fish market uh, where there are lots of restaurants and bars providing an, an, a very interesting opportunity to go out for food or for, to have a drink if you want that outside of uh, Debkov. However, as I said, it might be a bit too expensive, and therefore, I mean, I, it would be really nice, so I will investigate this, but I'm not sure if we're actually going to be able to afford that. Um, it also doesn't show on the website, so I'll have to go there in person. Um, another option, which is actually more likely, is the Les Use Hogus Hall. Um, they have several campuses. Um, a few years ago in Belgium, uh, the law was changed so that uh, institutes for higher education had to be grouped into well, so that the government wouldn't have to deal with as many of them. So they now have, uh, I think they have three in Mechelen and in four in Antwerp, and there's also one in, uh, nearby Sint Catalana Wafer. And in fact, that one, the one in Sint Catalana Wafer, was the venue for Academy 2008. So it is reasonable to assume that the people from Lessius Hogus School know how to deal with an open source conference. And I think uh, this is a, a likely uh, a, a interesting uh, venue. In fact, this campus, Campus de Vest, is. Uh, just a few hundred meters down the road from the train station, so also fairly easy to, to reach. I'll come back to that later. Um, lodging is not yet the best part of this presentation. Um, I live in Mechelen, um, therefore I don't need lodging in Mechelen, so therefore I don't need, know what, what's there, so I'll have to look for that a bit further. I did, uh, sorry? Okay, I did check a bit, I did check a bit, and I found several hotels are fairly near to my pie in the sky option. The Mercury V is in fact on the fish market itself. Um, price might be an issue though, it's a hotel, it's not a hostel. I checked, according to hostel, uh, hotels.com, uh, the price for one room for one night would be 60 to 70 euros, that's clearly far too much. Of course, these are prices through, with a commission, with, uh, without uh, scale prices, let's assume we can cut that in half, that would still get us 30 to 35 euros. It's more reasonable, but I think it's probably still too much. So uh, I'm, I need to talk to these people before I can actually make any promises about that. Uh, there are also some dorm houses in the city that might be a more interesting option. However, it's not clear if these will be available uh, in Belgium. If you study and you fail your exam in June, then you get to try again in September, which means that many students will still be in the dorm houses until September uh, studying, and they will probably not be very happy if lots of geeks are making noises in the hallways. Um, so. This really needs some more investigation, that's not clear. As such, I also haven't looked at uh, food yet because that would really depend on what we have for, for lodging, so. Um, I looked at this, Telenet is one of the major uh, players on the Belgian telecommunications market. They provide cable TV, uh, cable internet, telephony, uh, bo both uh, fixed and mobile. Um, they just happen to be headquarters in Mechelen, so that is somewhat helpful. Um, they have at least one Debian-based product, uh, a cloud storage, uh, sorry, cloud hosting product that where you can choose Debian as the operating system. So they probably know what Debian is and have a commercial interest. And we also have some inside lines. That is, I know a few of their system administrators, and I've also once uh, or twice sent them invoices for serv services rendered. So I think, given these facts, that it is not unreasonable to assume that they might be willing to provide sponsorship. Um, reachability is actually one of the strong points. Uh, the nearest, so you can see, uh, this is a map from, op oh, from OpenStreetMap. Um, you can see here, is, uh, maybe you can't see, but right here is Antwerp. This is Mechelen, <laughs> and this is Brussels. 
The nearest airport is Brussels National Airport uh, at Saventem, which is right here, um, about 20 kilometers away from Mechelen. There is a train station under the airport with a direct connection to Mechelen, which takes 11 minutes. That's rather quick, I would say. Um, there are high-speed trains to both Brussels South and, Br and Antwerp Central Station, uh, if you're coming from somewhere in Europe by high-speed train. Uh, from there, it will take, depending on the exact type of train, 15 to 30 minutes to get to Mechelen. Uh, it is also right next to E19, which is this blue line here. Uh, and there's two exits there, so, so if you're going by car, that's also fairly good reachable. So in summary, uh, Mechelen has very good reachability. Uh, it's easy to get there. Uh, it's an interesting environment, lots of things to do in a, in a city of that size, yet it's not too large. There are several options for the venue, although we need to investigate that a bit further. There will probably not be connectivity issues, uh, but we do still need to work on lodging. Thank you. Um, so we are here to present the proposal for DevConf in Germany. <laughs> <That's> well done. <laughs> <laughs> so we can leave. Um, we don't have as much information as Wouter had, uh, but uh, still we wanted to say that we are interested. So we don't yet have a city. Uh, there are many cities in Germany. <laughs> There's Berlin. There's Munich, there's Cologne, Frankfurt, yeah, and it goes on and on. There are many cities we haven't chosen which city we will uh, present as the formal bid in December, right? So yeah. it could be anywhere in Germany. Yeah. So many, uh, maybe many people will remember the last time we tried to run a bid for Germany. It will not be like that last time. We won't have internal bids against each other and fighting and whatever. We will try to put the venue thing first. We will go around Germany, look, have a look what's a good venue for DebConf, and then we decide, okay, this is a good location, and say, okay, we have nice areas all over the country, and it will be, it will be working. Mm -hmm. We also have beautiful landscapes, like here, but we will likely host it in a city and go to the beautiful landscape for the day trip. We also have lots of beer. <laughs> Although, personally, I prefer Belgian beer. <laughs> you can bring Belgian beer. Um, so, Debian in Germany. Debian, um, Germany is the second country in number of DDs, in number of active DDs. The first one, for anyone that wonders, is the United States. And there are also a lot of companies that work uh, with Debian, uh, like provide support or stuff like that, that we hope will be potential sponsors for this DevConf. But we haven't yet contacted anyone, of course. Yeah. And in terms of local team, uh, like I think two or three days ago, Azim approached me and said, okay, I want to do, or uh, we would like to do a bit for Germany again. And we just shouted around, wrote some mails, and we gathered like, what was it, 10, 12 people just out of DebCon who said, okay, we want to support, we want to support you. And I know a lot of other DDs or non-DDs contributors who really would like to help to have a DebConf in Germany. So on this side, we are pretty sad. Uh, so as, as Relina already said, we plan to work together as a country and not uh, put 
cities against each other. We want to find the best venue possible in Germany. We are convinced that there will be a good venue somewhere, although we don't know yet where. And if you are interested in helping out, there's the mailing list and there's the wiki. We are currently collecting ideas of possible venues and yeah, then we will be investigating those. I think that is. Yeah. So now let's take some questions from people. Again, I guess people may have some questions that apply to one bit or the other, but it's also nice if you can um, ask a general question that both teams can, can answer on. No questions at all? Not exactly a question, but something that I would like um, the bits to take into account is that every time we are having more kids, every time we're having we're having um, different developers with kids that couldn't make it here because of the infrastructures and stuff. So I would like to, to that the bits took into account making it available for for people with kids and especially uh, female Debian developers with kids to be able to attend. I don't think there's anything to answer. Sure, we will take that into account. Oh, <laughs> if I may say something about what he's saying, I, I, I sympathize with the general sentiment, but not with the specific as a parent. I would much rather bring my kid here than to a university campus. Not because I don't value university campuses, mind you. There's a lot of places there where I would prefer to take him to a university campus than there. But my point is, if some people don't like to take their kids to nature, that shouldn't be taken as, as an argument against doing camps, because I think camping is one of the activities that most benefits kids, and I talk as a parent. In my opinion, uh, yeah, it's on. In my opinion, DAPCONF changes every year. We had camping and nature opportunity here. We have a, uh, university accommodation in Portland, and I think we'll have a look what the next one will be. Even if maybe nature or camping is very friendly for children, we should look at diversity, real diversity. So have a look at what is a good venue and try to get all people together. And I think it should be changing with the countries. He, he's a talk master, not I. <laughs> I think it's also, I mean, sure, those considerations are important and I, I, I agree that it's, it's a good thing to look at that. Um, but the most important thing, I think, is to make sure that DEPCONF works well. Um, and if that is true, and then we can always look at, at what the available venues are to make it work well, and then pick the one that gives the, the best consideration for, for, for kids or, or people with par or parents with kids, or stuff like that. But I don't think that should be the most important consideration. But I sure agree that, it's, uh, that it, is, it is important and we should look into it. Thank you. So, Just a question from you. Who has ha raised his hand so that I have nowhere to go to? Or, or, so he's the next. Good. Just the last uh, sentence to the kids question, and at least for the Germany team, uh, two of the people on the Orga team have little kids, so you can rest assured that we will have to find a solution for us anyway, and that won't be limited to two. So. It's a, this is a somewhat of an unrelated question, but um, has, has any of you uh, thought about... Uh, pricing uh, or cost. Now, of course, I realize that all of these estimates will be wrong. They are every year. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. So I was asking about guesses at cost, and I, I realize that every year the numbers are wrong at this stage, and they will be wrong at several later iterations, so it's just an idea to get a you know, gut, you know, in, intuitive feeling for it. I did try to look into that, um, and that's how I came up with the hotel prices. Um, but it's it's really difficult to do that from 700 kilometers away. Um, I, it's one of the first things I'm going to look into when I get back into Mechelen, but it's really difficult to do that from here. I can't really give you any estimate that would be even remotely accurate, so I'm not going to try. Sorry. Yeah, it's almost the same situation here. Uh, we, we thought 
of, of different places and all of the different places we don't have any numbers so we, we can't really know. We want to have it affordable as always, we don't want to go over budget so it's something that will be taken into account and when choosing the best venue the, the price of the venue is also going to influence that choice. I mean, I know I just wanted to clear out that, I mean, if nobody else has anything else to say, that I wasn't saying that kids should be a priority or that nature should be chosen over campuses. I was just saying that it, it's been said twice to me, at least once, I heard it right now, and once before privately, that this was a bad venue for kids. And I just, like, personally, for me personally, saying as a parent, you know, have it wherever you want, but don't say that nature is bad for kids. Come on, it's ridiculous. This, this doesn't belong to this, this presentation, so please let's not go into it. If there is, if there's no more questions, the next session is going to be the DebConf next year in Portland session at, in half an hour, I guess. Um, so if there's no more questions, then I guess we just thank the good teams for starting. <laughs>